Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, our tribe embarked on their very first migration. They made it all the way over here to the Oasis Island, and they started their very first families here too. Though unfortunately, that has attracted a little bit of unwanted attention. A mother, Beryina, has actually taken this as her chance to invade our nursery, and we simply can't let that stand. So Chess is going to have to come up with a way to face this trial too. I'm sure he is very, very confident in himself. After all, he and Evie have already faced Animemes trials before, so they know that this is nothing they can't handle. But at the same time, since the Savannah Heat is a little bit more than they bargained for, most of our tribe mates only have two turns to work with. So we're definitely going to have to wait for our right moment to strike. Or we're going to have to rely on our little assassin instead. Kaya is one of the very few creatures who has every last one of her gems to use. That's all thanks to her big ears, of course, just like Baron. And I'm sure that Baron is watching her very, very closely right now. While she hasn't proven herself in the traditional way, which is hunting down one of these moles for the tribe, she is still very, very quick. In fact, Chess, if we bring you into the grasses, if we have you jump over here, I wonder if Kaya could land another very quick blow. It looks like she can. We'll have her jump over here and just take a quick look at the Baragina for a moment. She only has six days remaining on her lifespan. She's already poisoned too, and that's going to be a huge advantage for us. But let's have you go ahead and land one more blow. And then as Chess shuffles back into the taller grasses, we'll have you jump away back here with Bandersnatch again. Yeah, I think Baron is going to be mighty impressed with you. So even though you may not have hunted down any moles for him, he might be willing to take you back to his tribe too. I see that he has found a little clown koi in the water as well. It looks like they're very active today. So that's probably a good sign too. I figure he's kind of like the Oasis's little prophet, their own version of the oracles from our previous tribes. His excellent senses means that he can definitely tell if there's danger in their path. And I was also wondering if he would use these termite hills as some sort of sign. Maybe the red termite hills are taken to be a bad omen, and since so many of them are sitting right underneath this tree, he knows that there's trouble brewing. So that might explain why he's enlisting the help of our tribe now. He wants to see if Bander can save his family from the ruin in their path. But I think that Bander is going to want to make sure that his family is kept safe first. Even though he never connected well with this tribe, there's still his family, so he's still going to come back to support Chess. We'll bring him over here so we can clear out some of the grasses, opening up that pathway again for easier access. And as for you, Baron, if you could scoot on back here, maybe you could consult with the fish for us. Oh my gosh, three separate clown koi. Yeah, that has to be some sort of sign too. I wonder what all of those fish mean to his tribe. I've noticed that it's going to be a little bit more difficult than we bargained for to get to these islands in the middle. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's possible without some sort of water breathing skill, so we might have to search the oceans for those special plants. Unless maybe some little fish decides to swim in from the ocean too? We have found water bodies and gills before on wanderers, so I guess we can only cross our fingers. Now, as far as the babies go, Romeo, I'm sure you're going to want to drag little Coca-Cola away from the danger again. Let's have him scoot back here with Lumina, and then I guess Coca-Cola can go into shadow. We don't want her to set up by the ocean after all. That would just be calling the leeches toward us. So we'll have you sit right behind your mother instead. After that attack, I'm sure the Baryena's probably not going to go toward you, Evie. But all the same, it is very, very risky to set up right next to her baby. She probably has no idea that her baby really wants to play with yours, so we'll have you come over here to pick some berries instead. Actually, that would probably be a pretty good distraction for the babies. Distract them with some lunch so they won't be so afraid of this Bergina invasion. That should be the last of our turns, too. So let's go straight back to this little patch of darkness to see which direction the Bergina is going to go in. Oh, attacking us from the front now, are we? Well, only two days remaining. Evie, you could actually take down the Spiragina yourself. How about that for a change? We always assume that Chess is the strongest since he does have the claw, 
but Evie, even with her one strength, can easily conquer one of Anamim's challenges too. So if we bring Lumina down to the shore, she will have to watch for those leeches of course, but she can at least grab up this meat for us. And then I suppose the kids can toddle right behind Evie, trying to get a better look at the bear Yina, I'm sure. After all, this one is a little bit more their speed. I guess the kids might even be the one to stop Chess from harming the spare Yina even further. As he comes back to make sure that the danger has been dealt with, he might assume that the baby is another beast to slay. But I think that Coca-Cola is going to stop him in the nick of time. I guess it all depends where the baby decides to wander off to on the next turn. So let's go back to Baron to see if his fish are still swimming around him. Gosh, you have so many fish back here. Well, it looks like Kaya could probably spend an extra turn digging up this root for you. I'm sure the extra food would be very much appreciated. Then you might as well lead Bandersnatch deeper into the grasses too. Let's see if we can find your true family. Well, it looks like we have some extra little fish down here. I guess Bandersnatch could probably take care of that. We'll bring you over here to do a little spot of fishing on the next turn, as Baron creeps over to that berry bush that I saw. This must be his own personal little berry bush. Maybe this tree is actually his and his alone. His own special place to connect with the deities and where he can see their visions. He'll call Kaya over too, of course. Even though she might not have a mall to offer up to the elders of his tribe, he knows that there's definitely something special about her. So let's go ahead and skip the day again. We'll go back here to the baby bear Yina to see if he'll stay with our tribe. Did you just go charging straight off into the ocean? Oh my gosh, little one. I hope he's just over here on the ports. Oh, baby bear Yina, what are you doing? Drowning yourself in the ocean after your mother has passed. Oh, surely he's just going after those fish. I didn't realize that the bear Yinas were actually attracted to the fish too. Like, that's kind of how they act toward the bunnies. But since we don't have any rabbits running around, I guess that's their main source of food. Well, Evie, there's not really very much that you can do right now. And I'm sure that you are very, very worried about this poor little baby. He must have been frightened by Chess, actually, since he did seem so bent on chasing him away. Oh, well, your daughter is never going to forgive you for that. She really wants to make friends with this little guy. And I would imagine that Romeo is probably feeling a little bit jealous about that too. After all, he was the one fishing for her attention. Well, one thing's for sure, Lumina, we better get you away from the ocean. Let's have you scoot on up here so you can try to reconnect with Kaya. You can let her know the good news since the danger has passed. And since we saw the fish go this way, I wonder if maybe Evie would follow them too. As long as we keep this area lit up, hopefully the Baragina is going to be able to make his way back to the shore. I think she would probably be okay if she settled down on this tile, but any deeper is sure death for our tribe mates. They won't be able to pull themselves out of the water fast enough with only two turns. Though that being said, sitting down in the shallow portions of the ocean might be a good way to cool our creatures down. Maybe that's worth investigating further, as long as Chess is nearby to help pull you out if you need it. We'll have to see if we can crack open one of these termite mounds too. Not by you, of course, Illumina, with your spiky body. We don't want any repeats of Kingsley's situation. But trying to scoop up some termites might be a good way for our stationary creatures to spend their time. Now let's have Baron go ahead and grab a couple of extra berries over here, as he clears out the grasses right around his little home. I suppose Kaya could probably help him too. We'll bring her over here next to his very own permanent nest, in fact. Yeah, this is definitely his home base. He has a perfect little nest to rest his head at night. And it looks like that mole is back too. Oh, well, Kaya, maybe we can actually set up your own little test on the next turn too. That way Baron's mind will at least be at peace. And maybe that'll actually call some of his old tribe mates out of the woodwork as well. Hopefully we'll see some more wanderers spawning pretty soon. Let's go ahead and leave Romeo right there as we skip the day again and see where that poor Barakina is going to go. Oh, you poor thing. I wonder if he's actually stuck in the water. 
I mean, thank goodness the Baryinas can't take any drowning damage, or else he would have been a goner by now. But if he's stuck down there, there might not be any hope for our creatures to ever breed with him. Well, you should be safe to step down on this tile, Evie. Let's have you come down here, gently luring the fish a bit closer to the Baryina, too. It must be that fishing tail of yours. I could see her literally using this as a little fishing line just wriggling it in the water to entice the fish away. But now that the Baryina has been properly fed, maybe we can actually lure him back to try solid land. As long as we have some promise of better food, I guess. Oh, and Romeo, looks like you already have your second gem. I feel like these babies are growing very, very quickly all of a sudden. Coca-Cola herself is already 60s old. Maybe that means it's a good time for you to consider having another baby with Evie? After all, Coca-Cola had some amazing genes. It's actually good to see that she has the normal snout just like Chess. That probably means that Evie herself is carrying some interesting genes too. And the more we breed their babies, the more likely we'll be to see them. So with Romeo still trying to find a way to get the princess's attention, maybe he would actually turn his gaze to the termite hill. He could crack it open too, with his two in strength. So let's have him do the honors. Thankfully, since it's a normal, harmless termite hill, we don't have to worry about wiping the termites off of him when he tries to pick them up. But that being said, I can't imagine that he really enjoys this task. He strikes me as somebody a little bit too vain to let bugs crawl all over him. Not to mention he's probably a little bit squeamish too. And I can't blame you for that, Romeo. I definitely wouldn't want termites crawling all over me either. Maybe Chess could show him how it's done? We'll have you try to use your nimble fingers, maybe, to grab a few extra termites? Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working. Oh no, Evie. And you've left yourself open to a leech? Oh, but good thing Lumina is watching. If we bring her straight over here, she should be able to save you on the next turn. I know for sure that you're not going to take any damage. And as long as the piranhas don't come out of the woodwork we should be able to save you in time. I wonder what the Baryina is going to think of that, though. Like, I wonder if the leech was actually coming for the Baryina instead. Maybe this was Evie's way of trying to save him, or at the very least, to try to gain his trust. For that matter, it could be her way of showing him that the ocean is a little bit more dangerous than he's giving it credit for. You really need to get out of there, little guy. Now, have we found any of your tribe mates yet? No, it's still just as quiet over here as it was before. Well, Baron, as you continue to use this chance to gather plenty of berries in your homeland, let's have Bandersnatch keep grabbing those extra fish. And Kaya, this might be your moment to shine. It looks like that mole is still watching you at the moment. Let's have you jump over here then. Now you should be able to sneak up on it, right? Oh no, but you can't attack it? I almost forgot, you need to be a little bit stronger to take down one of these moles. Oh, this is a strange situation indeed. Baron knows that you have so much potential, you proved that with the Baryina, but moles are what his tribe favors. I definitely feel like his tribe would be very strict on traditions, so this reason alone might be why they're not coming out to greet us. Well, let's go ahead and skip the day again, and we'll pull Evie straight out of that water. Because unfortunately, the leech has definitely been her now. The Baryina has grown up a little bit too. And he seems to be very concerned for her safety. So as we move Evie back onto dry solid land, we'll have Lumina go ahead and pick the leech off of her. Lick her wounds. As the stag mole goes skittering straight back into its burrow. Oh, poor Kaya. You are definitely not used to the feeling of failure. Ever since she took it upon herself to make her mother proud, she's only ever known victory. So to fail so clearly in the eyes of this tribe has to just be tearing her apart. I'm sure she would probably try to find another mole for her troubles. So maybe we'll have her go deeper into the grasses again? If we have her come around this way, in fact, she might even be able to make her way over to the other side of the stream. Let's see what sort of mysteries are waiting for us there. We'll bring Baron down to his nest so he can light the path for her, because I know that he still wants to see her succeed. And how many fish do we have down here for you to pick up, Bandersnatch? Oh my gosh, 
fish after fish. So many fish that he's actually unlocked the fishing tail for us, too. Well, I'm not sure how that's going to help Baron with his bad omens, but you've definitely found your calling. So, Kaya, you probably won't be able to scoot over to the other side on this turn. Unfortunately, she doesn't really have the best eyesight. But we can at least set you up right here, and we'll just be extra cautious about the leeches. Now let's have Chess rush over to his mate's side. He must have heard the commotion. And now that they're together again, this would be a pretty good opportunity for us to breathe them one more time. So go ahead and clear out the grasses around you. Gather up that extra nesting material, because unfortunately Romeo has let that nest go to waste. We'll have you try just one more time to pick up a few of those termites too. And then Coca-Cola, let's have you come on over here so you can show them how it's done. I'm sure that she wants to get in the action now, so I guess in a way your plan has kind of succeeded. Though she doesn't really see you as the cool and capable heartbreaker that you think you are, so you still have quite a bit of work to do. Actually, wait a second. Are you floating right now? Romeo? Is that because he was on the nest before? Okay, so it seems like Romeo has a few superpowers of his own. How on earth are you doing that? You don't even have the wings. Maybe this is something that Baron would want to see. A creature with the power of levitation is probably something quite special in the deity's eyes, too. Well, let's go ahead and skip the day again, and cross our fingers that the Baryena is finally going to be able to retreat from the ocean. There you go, little guy. Our friendly Baryena is actually an adult now? Ah, huh, interesting. So I guess he could have a few babies of his own now, too. Well, one thing's for sure, it's probably not going to be Lumina. She wants to get as far away from this ocean as possible, and aside from that, she still wants to reunite with her mentor. Ooh, and look at all these shells. That's a very tempting sight. I wonder which one of our deities laid those out for us. Either the Bound Sisters or the Bandit Brothers. And unfortunately, there's usually no way to tell until it's too late. The Bandits are very, very good at hiding their mischief. Well, I guess Bandersnatch would probably want to come down this way anyways. We have plenty of coconuts for him to crack open too. So, if he's getting a little bit bored of all of these fishy snacks, he can just rest over here to crack open some coconuts instead. Now, Baron, I'm sure you're probably going to want to lead the way. Let's bring you over here so you can jump onto dry solid land and lead Kaya over to the home of your tribe. You know, I wonder if this is actually where his tribe is settled down. I just noticed that these ports over here seem to be leading back toward the burning savannah. So maybe that's where Baron's tribe came from. It could also be where they escaped to, though, if they couldn't survive the oasis anymore. So what these two find out here will be very important to his story. So come on over, Kaya. You don't even have to get your feet wet this time. We can bring you over here so you can settle down right between these two cacti plants and sniff deep into the grasses to find some more moles. It kind of seems like the opposite on this side. Instead of tons and tons of termite hills, we're just finding cactus plants absolutely everywhere. There are a couple of little berries up here though, right up against the water side. So I guess that might be a good place for a bandersnatch to settle down, as long as we can tear him away from his new coconuts. Now let's actually get you away from the water, Lumina. We'll have you come on up here so you can try to track down that pathway again, because it looks like things have gotten a little bit harder for you to see in the meantime. Maybe Chess can come up here to point you in the right direction? I guess he probably remembers hiding out over here, and this was the last place where he saw Kaya too. So, he'll help you along, but he's not going to go with you. He has a family to protect, after all. I suppose Evie could try her best to lead the Baryena back to the Heartlands if she comes on over here and grabs some extra berries for her troubles. Now, Coca-Cola, can you possibly stick those nimble fingers into this termite hill and actually find us some food? All these termite hills are so difficult to gather from. I really wish that we had been able to keep the sticky tongue. Well, maybe Mist will bless our babies yet. I still feel like there's probably a pretty good chance that Bandersnatch is carrying it, along with Lumina too. I wonder if we start a family between these two? If we would have a better chance of seeing it. Or for that matter, if the Baragina was a little bit love-struck by Lumina, maybe he'll decide to follow her down the path too. 
I suppose that Baragina Snout could be another very good way for us to pull some of those unique traits out of their genes. But one more time, let's go ahead and skip the day again and see where the Baragina is going to go. Oh, it looks like he went straight for Evie. I wonder if he's trying to protect you. He must know that you have another baby on the way, and I guess he was grateful that you pulled him out of the ocean. So, Princess Coca-Cola might finally get her wish. It looks like she's going to have plenty of time to spend with this little Baragina. And it also looks like you two may have lost your chance to get your hands on those termites. Thankfully, it's back on the green again. So, even if Baron were around here... Oh my gosh... And the shells have doubled? Oh, Banjer, I don't know how you can possibly ignore this. We'll let you go ahead and grab one of those coconuts, but then it's gonna have to be time for shells. Yet there is definitely some kind of spiritual connection to this tree. Not only is it the perfect place for a beast, but we have tons of food here. And it seems like the Balance sisters are very invested in it too. So you're probably used to hearing messages from all sorts of deities not just to Anamim and her Baryginas. Well, Baron, one more time, let's go ahead and sniff around. Can you sense any of your old friends out here? It really does seem like they may have all moved on. Maybe they were all too afraid of the omens that you saw, and they thought it would be best to just pack up and leave. But in the process, they even left their own little oracle behind. So this is probably a very heartbreaking revelation. His entire family is gone, and all he's left with are these strangers. Soon to be one more, in fact. Let's have Lumina try her best to follow on the trail of her mentor. Though with her poor eyesight, it's going to take her just as long to get there. Maybe it's a good thing that Bandersnatch is currently being distracted by these shells. Maybe that was even the deities doing too. The Balance sisters themselves are hoping to watch their family grow. Since they do technically come from different branches of the same family though, we will have to watch out for sick babies. There is always the potential that even if we do see the sticky tongue, they might not survive long enough to use it. Now I feel like Romeo has probably gotten himself pretty frustrated with this whole termite thing. I think he's about ready to call it quits but he still has to find a way to impress the princess somehow. So maybe we'll bring him off in this direction? Now that he has a second gem, he's not being watched quite so closely by the adults, so that means he can roam a little bit further away. He found a root over here too. And since Kai has nowhere to be found... Oh! There's a little crabbit over here? Well, you're awfully far away from your stash of shells. Oh, how interesting. Yet another sign. Yet another sign from the ocean. Well, I'm sure that Baron is going to follow you. Maybe the crabbit will even lead him toward his family after all. But since the princess still clearly has no interest in Romeo, he's going to have to find something much better than termites. So in the next episode, we'll see what he can find in this giant stretch of darkness that spans all the way around the oasis. All the way up to the Deadly Hills ports, in fact. Right next to the rapids. Do you think he would be brave enough to try to find a place to cross into the oasis? I'm not sure. Like I said before, it seems like this deep ring is going to prevent us from swimming there at all. But I suppose he could be the one to try to find a water-breathing plant. Now that would be something special. If he could find a way to ensure a safe passage to the very center of the island, I don't think that anybody would be able to ignore him then. The only question is, is that going to compete with his laziness? I know he has a big ego and a huge desire to impress the creatures around him, but he also prefers not to get his paws too dirty. And as for you, Baron, in the next episode, we'll see what becomes of that crab in the distance. It seems to have skittered away. Closer to the water, in fact. I wonder if maybe he'll even find another stash of shells down here, too. For that matter, there's always a chance that one of your tribe mates got stuck in the ocean. Maybe they were abandoned on their journey back home as well. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!